Okay, so Kyle is probably going to be insufferable on uh, the podcast on Sunday because the Patriots made yet another good pick, Christian Barmore. Uh, you know, they already went out and signed Godshaw, but sort of trying to fill up that interior defensive line that was kind of an issue last year. They had trouble stopping the run. Well, he's someone who, he, he might be a bit of a project, and we'll get a little bit more into it. He might be a year away, but you know what? He is someone who I think will be a really good player. And, uh, you know, New England stocking up on Alabama players. Uh, that's what they're doing. Both their first two picks have been Alabama players, and I like them both a lot. Let's talk about the player and why I like him. So we'll start things off with this play. What's going to happen is, I'll be honest, sometimes it is a little bit difficult when you really get into the tape to really see how good some of these defensive tackles are going to be just simply because they don't always just like flash on screen the way other positions do. You know, you watch an edge rusher, you can see them win these matchups and it, it just it flashes more than a lot of defensive tackles, especially a guy like Barmore, uh, who I think largely how he gets his wins is just through his strength and through his hands, which isn't something that necessarily is the sexiest thing in the world to watch. But that being said, when it does work out, it can really flash and also it's really something that translates more often to the NFL than someone who's maybe a little bit quicker or something like that. So it's good, even though I think the general perception might not be it might not be as exciting to watch on tape. But that's also why I wanted to start off with this play, because you will see his ability to sort of use his hands to win this matchup. He's going up one-on-one against the center, which is a good situation. That's something that obviously helps a defensive tackle because the center you're going to be going up against can't really get his hands uh, up as quickly. So it's just it's that slight advantage. And watch how well it works out for Barmore. As you see, he really gets his uh, hands over to that left side and is able to get a quick sack right there. The sack was helped because, you know, Mond stepped up in the pocket and then, you know, because there was pressure going through the side, which allowed Barmore to get that quick tackle. But really, I mean... You know, winning a matchup that quickly and being able to move that well at someone, you know, as with his size, I think that's really impressive. And it does show me that it can translate to the NFL, especially his ability to kind of, uh, you know, use his hands. That's the main thing that I like. But also the footwork is very impressive there, too. So several things to like about that play. But now we got to go to this play, because one of the things that really this entire draft process one of the things that I've been pounding the table on is don't just look at who seems to have the better tape look at who has the tape that shows that they will their skills will translate to the NFL because there is a difference between being a good college player and being a good NFL player and I do think that he is someone who could be just as good of an NFL player as he was a college player a lot of his skills translate well and one of the main skills when it comes to defensive linemen that translates to the NFL is power it's strength which is a bit surprising but I think it actually does kind of make some sense because you just have to be strong enough to go up against some of these NFL linemen the reality is you just can't beat them with like footwork and speed the same way you can you know do that in college so that's a key thing but on this play he's going to get double teamed it's it's going to be a there's actually a blitz that Alabama is running right here so the double team alone is going to help him and this isn't going to be like the most incredible play you'll ever see the main thing I just want you to watch is how far back he's going to push really that interior offensive line watch how right when this play starts you know again look at how far back they go just immediately they're three yards back he's just pushed the line of scrimmage backwards just like that so now for the LSU quarterback when, when there's other pressure he can't really just step up straight into the pocket now there's an edge rusher to Barmore's uh sort of to the top of the screen so to Barmore's right that he's kind of a little bit too far out of the way so maybe you can try to step up in that direction but the reality is it's just going to be hard to step up but for the LSU quarterback he doesn't have anyone to throw to and he does want to bide some time so he's going to try and see if he can scramble up in that area However, he goes up kind of slow because he doesn't have a lot of room to run and ends up getting tackled. So that's kind of one of those plays. I think it's a good example of showing that a lot of times these types of things aren't necessarily going to be on a highlight reel because a lot of times he's not even getting, you know, a a tackle or a sack. But his value is a lot more than that. His value is someone who can just disrupt things and can take on double teams, can push guys back and just make things easier for the other three or four guys who are rushing the passer. And we can talk about something like this where this is something that... I think is promising as well. When you have a strong guy who can move, you can start running twist, which I got to be honest, you know, his skill set seems like it would be great on twist. It actually, there's a bit of some issues. So basically the way a twist works, also called a stunt, there's several things that people call them. Uh, I've circled Barmore in white right there. He's going to run to the uh, the guard, 57. He's going to run to the guard's right. And basically the hope 
oftentimes is you want to just get the guard to continue blocking you so you can have uh, your edge rusher get a straight shot. Uh, you don't have to do that always, but that's just something that uh, you can do. Also, you could just get a quick block on, or you could get a quick hit on 76, the right tackle, which could allow you to get through yourself. So that's kind of the, the advantage of these types of moves. However, right when this play starts, I do feel like he kind of was a little bit too obvious in what he was doing, you know, gets over a little bit too quickly. I would have liked to see him kind of, you know, use his power on one of these two guys. I don't really care which one, but just use your strength to either pull the guard over or just to try and, you know, deliver a hit on a tackle so you can try and get through yourself. He didn't really do either one. So that's something that maybe he needs to work on, but I do still feel like his skill set is can be very good because he got there very quickly. It was more of just a technique thing, but also watch how now he can actually win a matchup against the right tackle. As you see, he does use his strength to just get through, and he's going to actually reach over and knock the ball out. So, uh, you know, I think still an impressive play there, even if he's not necessarily as good at twist as I would have expected. Hey, he didn't do a great job and then ended up beating a right tackle on a one-on-one -on -one matchup to get a strip sack. You'll take that even if it was kind of a bit, you know, unusual of a strip sack. Still, uh, I think it's an impressive play. And we'll show one more play. Honestly, this is the real thing. There's a lot we can talk about with Barmore. I do think he's a really good player. I actually think he's underrated. People are talking about this defensive tackle class being like a poor defensive tackle class. I don't really see it that way. I think he's very good. I also think that there's a couple other guys, Shelvin and Onzerike, who are really good as well. So I think this is actually a pretty good defensive tackle class. I think he is one of them. And a play like this is exactly what he can bring to the table, where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against the center. And a lot of what he's going to do is just try and use his power, which is, again, that's something that translates to the NFL level. As you see, he is just going to completely overpower this uh, center. And he ends up, again, knocking the ball out. So I've never seen a defensive tackle uh, just find a way to reach over and knock a ball out like Barmore can. But also the strength is the real thing that I think will really come into play. And he's just the kind of guy where you can't block one-on-one -on -one with a center. And a lot of times that's what you're trying to do with a defensive tackle. There's a lot of value in that as a defensive tackle. It's not the sexiest position. He's not someone who I think is going to get like 16 sacks. You know, he's not an Aaron Donald, but I could see him. He's a good pass rusher enough that I could see him getting a handful of sacks and just helping set up even more sacks. And he's good in the run as well. So again, a lot he does very well. He's a very interesting prospect. Uh, so I like him as a player. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on Barmore as a player? What are your thoughts on this draft selection? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.